All right. Hey, everybody. So we're here with one of our pilots on Stock Pilot, Lazaro Gari. Uh, Laz, thanks for joining, man. Glad to have you on here. Glad to be connected. Um, so we we got connected uh, a while ago, I believe, through through LinkedIn, right? I think that was a LinkedIn yeah. message that I sent you. That's right. Yeah. yeah That's that crazy, definitely. man. I, I think probably, what, seven months ago or something like that? Oh, yeah. It was a while back. <clears throat> it was, I, uh, I want to say it was even... Yeah, seven months, maybe even a little more than that. But yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty wild, man. Before we even launched the platform, we had a, a Zoom call or, or actually a, a Google Meet call, and then I showed you the platform. You're you're pretty imp impressed, and now we finally got you on the platform, uh, right in time for launch. I was extremely impressed. It was it was something that is needed badly for all of us. So um, the minute I saw, I'm like, I definitely want to be a part of that. <laughs> cool cool glad you are man glad you are uh so if you don't mind could you give the viewers here just a little bit about your background your hobbies uh where you're from and and possibly you know how you got into trading mm -hmm. yes yeah, so uh you know my background's mostly in finance and economics um it's been for as long as i can remember whether it's was in you know directly in the finance industry or even in the international consulting um, I've been in finance and economics pretty much as far back as 2006. Um, you know, I got into trading, uh, believe it or not, I got into trading a while back. I mean, I got into trading when I, it was my junior year of college and I took an internship, um, with a Forex brokerage firm, um, over the summer. Now, the job mostly consisted of making like cold calls, 400 cold calls a day. Uh, and I remember specifically because I would do the morning shift and an evening shift, and then I would get a break in between because I was contacting people not just in the US, but abroad too. And I would get them, I would try to get these customers to come on and, you know, buy Forex. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that was, that was a hard sale. Uh, but, you know, eventually I, I, I got good at it and the, managing director gave me a shot at taking a look at how it works behind the scene like doing some trading and that was my first exposure and i fell in love you know um that i i knew that that's what i wanted to do so you know you fast forward 10 15 years later the technology has gotten so much better and so much just easier for everyone to to participate forex for the most part was really just kind of traded with the institutionals and futures. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about my, my strategy later and why that's important, why I'm trading more so now than I did in the past 10 years, for example. Um, but a little bit more, you know, about my hobbies. Um, I'm, I'm an avid, I'm an avid fisher. Um, I'm originally from Florida. So, um, you know, I've always had the beach and the sand and the surf around me, uh, so I'm a big fan of that. And and I'm a, I'm a traveler, man. I, I go places. I've I've lived abroad for a while. I lived in China for eight years. I lived in Japan oh, for a year. Huh. So you know, and then I've jumped around in the U.S., Florida, New York, um, Texas. I'm in. I'm currently in Texas. My kids go to school here in uh, Katy, Texas, just a 30 minute commute outside Houston. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Awesome, man. That's that's pretty crazy. I didn't know that you lived in China for for that long. That's uh, yeah, that's wild. Um, all right, so Laz, um, what is the craziest thing you've ever seen while trading? You've been trading for a while. You know, was it the pandemic? Was it two thousand eight? Was it like a certain sector, or something that happened? You know, what what was the craziest thing you've ever seen while trading? Yeah, um, I've seen a lot of crazy. <laughs> There's been a lot of crazy things that's happened since. Um, I first began trading, um, you know, I took, I took a hiatus from trading when like the 2008, all of that went on. That was when I first went to China and took a bit of a break from trading. But, um, <clears throat> when I got back into it, you know, I want to say recently, as a matter of fact, one of the, just this, the pandemic, so 2020, um, that, that time period between i want to say like march and like august or so um 
you know, it was it was just pandemonium. It was just complete craziness. And uh, there's one trade in particular that I'll never forget. And I, honestly, I can't even remember the name of the company. I think it was a pharmaceutical. But basically, the night before, the president, um, you know, Trump at that time, he he pushed this pharmaceutical saying that this company was going to have, you know, I don't even remember what the details of the of the, you know, question he was asking the he just dropped the name of the company and the overnight you know what was going on with that stock overnight it was crazy and then the next morning i remember getting into it pre-market and at that time because you know stocks were nuts i was trading on the hourly five minute time frame um oh it was like watching a rocket take off <laughs> and this stock just that morning it just went haywire it must have appreciated by like 76 percent in like the matter of a few hours that was by far the craziest thing i've ever seen huh that's interesting that's that's yeah. wild um yeah man pandemic was uh i that's that's when i was sitting there looking at charts and i was like this is this is unbelievable this is crazy yeah um all right so an, another question here when you are trading and it's just normal time you know like market nothing crazy is going on no pandemic What's one thing that you look out for specifically when you're trading? Something that sticks out to you, you know, something that you're, you see it and you say, okay, great. Mm, you know, it's, I know that a lot of people are purely technical traders and there's a lot out there who are purely fundamental traders. I use a combination of both. Okay. So uh, my fundamentals are very important to me and that I collect a lot of data to give me a fundamental predisposition on a particular well country um uh, on a particular sector or you know uh, index for example um so i'll keep an eye like the fundamentals will steer me in the direction of a particular asset uh, but i'll watch it and then that's when the technicals get involved so um things that i rely on i mean there's so many technicals out there you know there's I, I want to say any manner of technicals, they're useful in their own way. Personally, I'm a fan of the strat. It's a it's a technical strategy um, created by Rob Smith. He's he's huge in the um, you know market trading industry. Uh, Robin Black, I think you can find him on Twitter. But his his particular strategy of price action, um, I look for. And what what's a great setup for me. Um, is when I see I'm a bit of a swing trader. So if I see that a particular asset has hit, you know, either it's volatility high or volatility low, and I'm fundamentally bearish or bullish on it, I'll wait for that candle to swing backwards and break the previous day's low or previous day's high. And that's my that's my you know red light, like well, green light in this case. Let's go get in all in. Um, and you know, I'll set my stop somewhere around the previous days, open um, or low or high, depending on which direction I'm going. Uh, that's kind of my strategy, um, and it's been working for me so far. You know, markets. You know, that's the thing. You got to be real nimble. You got to know when to change your strategy when the markets are are changing. Right now, <laughs> that that approach is working, um, and I hope it'll continue to work in the foreseeable future. Cool, cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Right now, that that strategy is working. Uh huh. It's months from now, it might change up. You know, it, it happens. Yeah. It happens all the time. I'm telling you. <laughs> Here, so your strategies, the strategies that you're going to use through the Stockpilot Auto Trader. Could you give uh, the viewers just a little bit of a, a glimpse of what you're going to do there? Yeah. So I think it's safe to say that of all the traders you'll be exposed to on Stockpilot. My strategy is a little bit more, it's a little different. Um, I know a lot of traders tend to go the more bottoms up approach. So they're focused heavily on either, you know, stock options or crypto options. I take more of a top down global macro approach to my trading. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking at things from a bird's eye view globally. Uh, and I'm determined my, my, I'm focused mostly on the fundamentals, the economic fundamentals of the 10 largest countries in the world, the G10, they're called. And then I work backwards or downwards, if you will, from there. Um, 
uh, I mostly <laughs> I'm looking at Forex and, and I'll explain how on Stockpilot we're going to be able to trade that. Um, so we go, I go Forex, bonds is the next level, which I'm keeping a close eye on, followed by futures, um, mostly the equity indexes, things like uh, gold, oil. Um, and then, you know, my last level, if I even get to it, would be equities. Um, so, you know, you might want, if you're looking to diversify your portfolio, you would go to a trader to get your stocks. But with me, you're going to get a little bit more on the Forex and future side. Now, how, you wonder, would we be able to do that? Well, now there's plenty of ETFs that are spot exchanges for exactly those vehicles and i do it in the most cost effective manner i use options so we're looking at call options put options um spreads uh and we're we're mostly purchasing the forex the etfs of the us dollar the etf of the euro i'll do the etf you know for spy which is the s p 500 index there's gld which is the gold ETF and we'll buy calls we'll buy puts um, I am not so much of a day trader more of a I'm, I'm looking at about anywhere between I would say four to eight trades a week um, okay. the sweet spot for me is about six six trades a week and I hold those positions anywhere between you know a few days uh, depending on market volatility a few days to as long as a month so, you know, my positioning is a little bit more different than like your standard day trader who might trade on the hourly kind of candles. Um, I'm trading mostly on the daily and the weekly, holding positions for a few more days, um, sometimes for as long as a month. Wow. That's pretty, that's cool, man. That's all. That's awesome. I like that approach. Uh, definitely different uh, from what I've seen and in, in the traders that I've spoken to. Yes. Um, so your social fund through Stockpilot. Now the account minimum requirement for a subscriber to get connected to your social fund is twenty thousand dollars, right? That's right. Um, yeah. so, so they will need at least twenty thousand dollars in their account to then trade uh, your strategies, the strategies that you're implementing. Yep, that's that's definitely right. That's the sweet spot. That's the right amount just to get enough of a exposure to what I'll be investing in. Cool, cool. All right, man. I think that pretty much include, concludes our call here. Um, for, you can find his website in the description below, uh, saddlebrookinvesting.com. Uh, and, and I know on your website, I think it has your email on the bottom right corner. I mean, can these guys reach out to you if they have any questions, if they have any uh, anything they want to ask you? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's on there. Um, you, you can find me there. You can find me on Twitter as well. Uh, you know, if it, it should be in there. Um, but yeah, you, please contact me. I'll be happy to answer any questions and yeah, look forward to being your pilot in this journey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. Awesome. Yeah. You can also find Laz on our pilot listing page. I will put that in the description as well. Um, and I'm sure his contact information, his website's going to be listed there too. So uh, feel free to reach out to him. Laz, thanks, man. Uh, it's always It's always great to talk to you, man. Thank you so much.